he always comes around right around election time. He doesn't come in until about eight to nine months out from the election. That's when Michael Moore comes in. They start to bring him on more. And now he's we're in that loop. And now yeah. he's here. He's part of the uncommitted campaign. The guy that talks people into the lesser two evil every single cycle. That guy, he's a, he's a part of that, too. So let's listen to a little bit of what he says here. But the honesty part really has to be to his conscience and to himself. And what's going on uh, with Gaza and the funding of Netanyahu and hugging him and all this, you know, as a, I guess I'm a recovering Catholic at this point, but Joe Biden is he's one of the few presidents in my lifetime that actually when they went to church, like he means it. You know, Jimmy Carter was like that. I think, you know, but very few uh, presidents. So so the guy that Michael Moore is saying, there's a lot of presidents who say, you know, they're into church, basically. But Joe Biden really means it. And that's the guy who's committing and, and facilitating the genocide. What does that say, Michael Moore? That the guy you are trying to claim has the biggest heart and is genuine happens to be the guy who's also committing a genocide. You guys see how the PLC Isn't that classes, weird? <laughs> this made my remember I said earlier how they say stuff that contradict contradicts uh each other. They say stuff that makes no sense with a straight face, and they expect that their title will be enough to uphold their argument. Michael Moore, the filmmaker. Some PMC motherfucker with a master's degree, a doctor, they will say stuff that makes no sense at all. And then if you say, if you speak out against it, oh, you just, a, oh, you just an ignorant worker, or you don't know what you're talking about, you don't, you didn't do the research I, like I did. It's such, and it's been something I've been noticing a lot recently, man. It's such an insidious tactic that these people use. Let's continue. Absolutely, and he continues with nonsense. Let's listen. I think, and I think he does mean it, and I'm just. If I had a chance to talk to Joe Biden, the first thing I want to ask him is, "What do you still go to mass? I mean, what's going on here? Why are you participating in something that's killing civilians and children and and thirty thousand now dead? Uh, it's it just." But, but well, let me ask Abby, you about that, Michael. I, I, I do want to talk yeah. exactly about this issue because, you know, we have seen Michigan voters where you're from say that they're not yeah. going to vote for Biden because of how he's handled mm -hmm. this war. I mean, they want to see change from Biden, but yeah. he, yes. Biden is dealing with a foreign policy issue that is beyond this next election. Do you think that this dissatisfaction is going to hurt Biden significantly come November? Or will yes. these voters change their mind when it's Biden against Donald Trump? Well, I, I don't think anybody who, and nobody I know certainly voted for Biden uh, three years ago, uh, almost four years ago, uh, is, has changed their mind and believed that they made a mistake and they're going to vote for Donald Trump. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen, possibly, and the danger to Biden here is that people, and remember, 70% of the electorate now is either women, people of color, or young people between the ages of 18 and 35. That's 70% of the voters. And, and to, to uh, offend and upset a group that supported you back in 2020, especially young people, I mean... You know, I, I, I've been saying this this month that he's going to cost himself the election. He's going to, uh, you know, if Trump has any chance, it's that the decision that he's made to embrace slaughter, hmm. carpet bond, um, uh, incubator, babies and in incubators dead because they cut off the electricity on and on and on. And, and this is and he. I think Joe Biden somewhere confused the fact that, of course, the majority of Americans uh, uh, will do anything to protect our Jewish brothers and sisters, no matter where they're at. Um, and, and I would say a majority of Americans uh, support Israel. Um, and, and I would say that practically all of us want those hostages released right now. Oh, uh, what a so, focus comeback. For one, and not, define, define support Israel. Because I can't believe I'm actually saying this because as someone followed follow this issue, like the pro-Palestinian side haven't been popular. 
for a very long time. Now, if you want to define Israel as supporting their military operation, it's absolutely false to say Americans support Israel because the majority of Americans, including 80% of your party, support a ceasefire. And you have the Israeli government that is fighting a ceasefire to, with tooth and nail. So that's why I asked, how do you define supporting Israel? If you define it as supporting the military operation, what he just did, he said a lie. Most Americans don't support Israel. Is uh, and I don't know how much about Michael Moore, but he, he paints himself as a progressive. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but man, to see him like that was the last few lines here was just pure Israeli propaganda bootlegging. <laughs> we said that Israel must release all the uh, uh, we, we want to see the release of all Israel hostages. What, why just so Israel can continue their slaughter in Gaza? That's what's going to happen. That means Palestinian resistance have no leverage. Why is no one talking about the fact that they're Palestinian hostages held by Israel? Without any charges, there was this, there was this Palestinian uh, prisoner who was released. And he was 15 years old, CJ, and That's he was in there for insane. years. So you know how old he was when he was arrested? He was like eight to seven years old when he was arrested. No one talks about them, and they want us to be oh Israeli hostages. No, Israel been taking Palestinian hostages and prisoners for years, children and women. Ninety percent of them reported being sexually assaulted. They put the people in prisons and they tortured them. You get, you see these Israeli hostages. They come back. They like a million fucking bucks. They they look like they took a high school picture in their yearbook. Meanwhile, you get Palestinian prisoners that come back. They look like skeletons. They're immensely broken. They're not even the same people no more because they go through torture and Israeli detainment. But Michael Moore, oh, we want the Israeli hostages free. No, Israel need free the Palestinian hostages. How about that? That's why I said that Hamas was successful. And this hurts the feelings of everyone in the West, CJ. But Hamas was successful in a military operation because one of the goals of the military operation, as laid out as Hamas, was to free Palestinian prisoners and raise awareness about Palestinian prisoners that no one had talked about before the conflict. Isn't that exactly what happened, isn't it? But that's my rant. It was, that was very frustrating. But I'm still here, CJ. I had lots of going on in the background. Yeah, so yeah, no, I, I, yeah, for sure. Now we're closing out. Let me just show you a couple of receipts. This, that's all the videos. Here's Mehdi Hassan. Now, I don't use him as a receipt often, but this is a good point because they're painting a lot of this as Arab anger, Muslim anger. When I'm looking at Nick, I'm looking at RBN. We're black. I'm not Muslim or Arab, and I'm angry as hell, too. Because exactly. uh, to your point, you always say this. It's just the largest. Div it's the same gap between young and old as it is between people of color and not and and, yep, and, and that's why i've been making people i've been making people uncomfortable i'm sorry cj but i don't yeah, know you ahead. probably don't know if you're not online but i've been like having a lot of these viral tweets and one of my viral tweets calling out the genocidal tendencies of white americans what they've been like kid rock was on joe rogan he was just saying yeah. he's he said he supports killing forty thousand palestinians just to get 100 hostages back and that and joe rogan just nodding along and Everyone talking about like the youth gap, but I think there's a reason no one talking about the racial gap because the the fight against colonialization will be clear. Right. The real battle will be clear. That's why they like, oh, right. it's the young, the battle to the young, oh, it's the Arabs. No, the the difference between black people who who oppose Israeli apartheid and white people is the same gap you see between old and young. And I know that's very uncomfortable for people who think race doesn't matter to, to talk about that. But that's, that's a very clear, that's a very important data point for us to to analyze. It may hurt your feelings, but we gotta ask the question: Why is seventy five percent of white America okay? What the what the fuck is going on in Gaza? You know what I mean? Like if, if there the was question. a poll that showed seventy percent of black people, if there was a poll that showed seventy percent of black people supported a genocide, you think I wouldn't be on these motherfuckers? You guys think I want to be doing videos about that every damn day? Like, that's a very important data point that no one wants to talk about. You guys have people in your family that support Israel. I know you guys do. You got motherfuckers that support the genocide. Y'all just okay with it. I wouldn't be okay with it, fam. I call out my family for less. Why, why is there this giant silent peace with going on with people in, in, in America being okay with people who support uh, violent state policy? It's not if one of my friends and one of my, one of my people I call brother casually just told me he support the war in Afghanistan. <laughs> nigga, I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. like, nigga, you want to go get a Big Mac? <laughs> let's, no, let's, go get, let's go to McDonald's now. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't cancel people with political opinions, but that's a big one. You know what I mean? Like, no, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about it. What do you mean you support the war in Afghanistan? Like, now imagine the Gaza war. Like, if I was with my my brother and they like, 
I ain't nigga, you're covered about Israel. I think I think we have to fucking pull those guys up. Wait, nigga, all activities in the future is canceled until we talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, right. uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot through a bunch because I gotta get out. Here. I'm gonna shoot through a bunch yeah, of yeah, uh, just 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 people's reaction. Here's Mehdi Hassan making a great point. It's not just Arab American Arabs and Muslims in Michigan who are pissed off. It it, it seems, and it points to this poll. And let me just zoom into the actual tweet. This is the actual tweet here. I think that's she'll sh- she'll be. I can't even say the name, but this is what it says. It's about a poll. A new poll conducted in Michigan by the Howard University shows President Biden's support amongst black voters has dropped to 49 percent from 94 percent. Nick, look at that drop in 2020. While Trump's support has risen to 26 percent. So Trump's support has risen three times the amount. And but look at that how that has dropped because of uh, the what's happening in Gaza. That's a, a poll conducted by black people at Howard University. Go ahead, Nick, if you were going to chime in. People are, because of what I do, my otherwise not I, my famously non political, apolitical family, they will randomly say stuff to me now that they will never say before because they know that I talk about politics now. It's something that I like knew that in my life, right? Like, I had my sister turn to me like, Yo, what the fuck is going on in Israel, bro? Like, it was like a few days ago. <laughs> and bro, she never talks about politics. My famous, if you follow the channel for a while, you got to know my famously apolitical family. I am seeing them talk about this, bro. Unprompted. <laughs> they, they, and they'll mention it to me because they know I talk about this stuff. That's, on, that's the only reason I know. They, my mom mentions it to me. So people have no idea. And I don't know anything that can be measured by data yet how much black people are disgusted with what they're seeing. Because yeah. the people who are not as radical as we are, CJ, I, make this, I know we got to get out of here, so I'll pass it right to you after this. They, they think that our society progressed more than, than it has. And CJ, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like, there are people in black community that like, think the Jim Crow era yes. government is done. So when they see this, it's actually jarring, bro. Like, I've see, I seen this with, my, with casual people in my life all the time, where they see what our government doing in Gaza, and they literally can't believe it, bro. Like, it, it, actually, it, it activates them. And so when we see these numbers with black voters, I think we're just scratching the surface. Because there's still people on the grind, CJ. Like, what, what, what happened when the summertime hits? When people start paying attention to politics, like, like naturally, then you're gonna have more people read about the genocide and got more black people. I know people are just hustling. I got my brother who he don't do anything but hustle, bro. He got his own big nothing but hustle. Once they pay attention, bro, then you're gonna see even more disgust, and then you're gonna have backlash against the liberals who who support genocide, Joe, from the black community. So what happens after that? Then there's gonna be a lot of black liberal pressure not to support Biden because he's gonna be so unpopular. This, this is me just spitballing on what's possible in the future. But Democrats have no idea what they're in for in this next election. They deserve it. 